Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we'll be talking about the Frulani integral and some of its more elementary applications. The Frulani integral states that Frulani must be an Italian mathematician that if we integrate from 0 to infinity with respect to our variable x, sorry, that's a terrible infinity. Gotta get it looking good. There you go. Of any function of some arbitrary constant of b times x minus the same function, by weight at an arbitrary constant a times x over x, we will have f of infinity. God, I just can't draw them today. Sorry about that. f of infinity minus f of 0 times log of b over a. Now this won't hold for any function. There are certain conditions that physicists don't typically care about, but let's go ahead and write them down. So it applies for these conditions. So they would apply for the derivative continuous on the interval zero to infinity. And we also have to have the integral of f of x minus f of infinity over x to be finite. For these conditions that a mathematician would care about, this integral will be equal to this. As a physicist, we don't really care. In fact, we would use this on any function that we want. And then if it didn't agree, we would know that these conditions weren't satisfied and we would look for some other method to use. Let's go ahead and prove it though, or derive it rather. A mathematician would prove it, a physicist would derive it. So I guess we'll derive it today. Yep, looks correct. So we'll start by noting that basically the integrand looks like it itself could be written as an integral pretty easily. And in particular, we're going to be recognizing the elementary formula from calculus. Uh, we need formula that we have a to the b, uh, but to x of f of x, we're going to have the antiderivative of f evaluated at b minus antiderivative of f evaluated at a. And we're going to see how we can apply this here, um, where f is obviously the definite integral. Let's see what we can do here. The integrand f of bx minus f of ax over x can be, if we take 1 over x along for the ride, simply written as 1 over x integral from ax to bx of df. It's exactly what this means. We're just taking f and evaluating at the upper and lower bounds. And we can continue one step farther. Uh, keep one over x long for the ride. Now we're going to say that f has some argument. We're going to call it u and use the chain rule to write this down. And now we want to relate our new variable u to x in some way. We're going to introduce a new variable in a moment here. So we need to first introduce a new variable. Let u be our old variable x times our new variable t. So then we have our new variable t is nothing but u over x. And we're going to change the limits, of course, limits of the integral. So we have t of ax. We just divide the x. It's going to be a and t of bx is going to be b and we're also going to have du with t being the variable is just x dt. We're going to have 1 over x integral from a to b and we have x dt now and we have df with respect to our new variable xt. We're going to cancel these x's. Of 
Great, that is pretty much as far as we can go in this form. If we want to bring one of these variables outside, we'd have to integrate over x to make it a valid expression. So why don't we do that now? So now we have the left-hand side of the expression that we want to evaluate is simply integral from zero to infinity of dx of what we just did here, which is a to b dt df by dxt. And we can go ahead and interchange the limits of integration, a to b now. Now we have df by dxt. We're going to write this as 1 over t df by dx, since we're switching the limits now. And we might as well put the t over here, since that's where it belongs with the t integral. And we're basically done. So we see that these dx's cancel because of the chain rule. So this just becomes df. And we can go one more step if you want, but you can definitely see we have a log and we have the function. So this is just going to be log of t evaluated at b and a, and we're gonna have f of x evaluated at infinity and zero. And that's exactly what we have at the top of the board there. So we're done. Great, notice we did use Fubini's theorem to interchange the limits of integration. Here we had the x integral and then the t. We did the t first and then the x. We can do this, number one, because we're physicists, and number two, because we're just going to assume that the function f satisfies the conditions of Fubini's theorem, which we indicated earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. Great, so let's go ahead and work out a few simple examples because what use is a general formula if you don't use it to derive specific integrals, huh? You need to actually derive them in order for it to be useful. So what functions can you think of that have clear behavior at if x equals infinity and x equals zero? Well, one particular function comes to mind. Let's go ahead and talk about our example f of x is equal to e to the minus x. For this function, I don't know why I can't write today, everything looks terrible. Obviously our function e to the minus x will go to, as x goes to infinity, zero, since the graph looks like this, of course. Yeah, yes it does. No, not quite like that. <laughs> Sorry, like, like this. We have infinity, yeah, yeah. And, and we have one here, of course, as x goes to zero. It's going to approach one, this is our graph. And we can use this to write our integral immediately. We have this one, integral infinity, zero to infinity for free. e to the minus bx minus e to the minus ax over x is just going to be, well, f of infinity is zero f of one is one, log b over a, which becomes log a over b. I personally don't like it, how the limits in here, how the a's and the b's interchange, I find it very unfulfilling, but that's just how it is. And we'll see the other examples don't have that case. Uh, but before I move on, uh, this, we can also note that we can represent the logarithm function in a new way by using this formula. We can now write the log of a variable x, letting x be a, of course, and making a few other substitutions. It's just going to be integral from zero to infinity, dt, e to the minus t, minus e to the minus tx over t. It's useful in analytic number theory, apparently. I haven't used it, but you apparently can, so if it's useful to you, feel free to use it. You know how to derive it now. And let's also check up just a second canonical example. Are we talking about the inverse tangent function? So for 
f of x is equal to inverse tangent x, we have the limit goes as x goes to infinity pi over 2, and as x goes to 0, 0, since the graph looks like, let's see if I can get this one right, looks basically like this, with this being pi over 2 and this being minus pi over 2. Ha, got that one right. <laughs> uh, okay. So now we can immediately write down this integral. Let's go from 0 to infinity of dx inverse tangent bx minus inverse tangent ax over x is simply pi over 2 log b over a. I like this one more actually because it keeps the b over a where it's supposed to be. That's pretty cool. But these examples seem pretty trivial. You might say you're just plugging in functions. These are not very interesting. Well, got you covered. I went through my Schramm's Handbook of Mathematical Functions and I found an interesting integral which is not immediately in the Frulani form but can be easily put into it for our last and final example, we'll be considering the integral from 0 to 1 of dx, x to the m, minus x to the n over x. Looks pretty interesting, right? We have some limits that are not 0 to infinity and something that's not obviously of this form. So let's see what we can do about, oh, sorry. That's not interesting, is it? No. If there were just an x there, it wouldn't be interesting because only the limits would change. We want to consider this integral with log x in the, dem in the de n denominator. It's going to be very weird, very interesting. Let's go ahead and use a u substitution, because why not? Well, as I just mistakenly wrote down there, if there was an x here, it would actually be pretty similar to what we want to do. So x should be somewhat related to the log. And you'll see to get the limits to work out, it has to be minus log. So we'll use that. This tells us obviously that x is equal to um, e to the minus u. Let's evaluate our new limits. u of zero is minus, minus infinity since log of infinity, sorry, since log of zero is minus infinity, which is plus infinity u of 1 is minus log of 0, which is still 0, and we're going to have dx is minus e to the minus u du. So I took this, differentiate it, get the minus sign du. Great. Let's evaluate it. Our integral in question now becomes, well, 0 to 1 becomes infinity to zero, which is kind of weird, but we'll deal with that. Infinity to zero. Our dx becomes minus e to the minus u du. And we have x to the m here. Well, x is this. Just raise this to the mth power. This is e to the minus m u minus e to the minus n u. And now we have our x, log x actually. It's minus u. Don't forget the minus sign. It's very important for this problem. Okay. Let's simplify a few things. We see that the e to the minus u's will combine in the numerator to increase m and n by 1. And we also see that these minus signs will cancel out. So if we want an integral from 0 to infinity, we have to negate this. So let's go ahead and do that. 0 to infinity. We have du e to the minus m plus 1 u minus e to the minus n plus 1 u over u. And now, finally, this is precisely a form that we can evaluate using our Fulani theorem. f is just e to the minus u, with the constant being something plus 1, which is exactly what we did before. So let's, let's go ahead and plug it in. This time we get a nice minus sign, and we get a 0 minus 1, just like before, and we have log of the constants. And this time the minus signs actually cancel out nicely. So if 
final result is log of m plus 1 over n plus 1. I think this result is pretty cool because these integrals look pretty nasty even doing one particular case I don't really know how to do without using this formula. Let's just show you an example. Example of this. Um, let's go ahead and integrate integral from 0 to 1 x squared minus 1 over log of x. We just plug in chug into our formula here. It's going to be log of 3 halves uh, which we can obviously see 2 plus 1 is 3 and we have a uh, 0 plus 1 is 2, right? Maybe it's only supposed to be log 3. Did I evaluate this wrong? Okay. x squared minus 1. So we have 2 plus 1 is 3. 0 plus 1 is 1. I think it's actually log 3. Sorry about that. But yeah, this is a pretty cool integral, and we see how we can apply the Frulani integral in a variety of contexts using u substitution. That's how we can apply these integration formulas typically. If we don't see something that is immediately applicable, hopefully we can get it into this form. And if you know any other ways to evaluate these kind of integrals, definitely let me know in the comments. If you have any other examples of the Frulani theorem that you want me to cover, I'll check it out. And thanks so much for giving us a watch here, mostly math, and like, subscribe. See you next time.